It took me over 10 years of shooting advertising with flash photography to have the experience and the technical knowledge to create these two images right here. And my goal is that in the next 10 minutes, you'll have the same understanding of light to create them for yourself. This skate shoe ad is for the limited edition U2 Horigami Dunks from Nike SB. These guys over here. I wanted to shoot something relatable to these dunks and visually striking to anyone who gets a new pair of shoes, whether they like the look of these Nikes or not, and whether they're skaters or not. And at the end, I even share a few back and forths with my retoucher to show you what she worked on and a couple of tips that I really think you should all implement within your workflow, either your hobbyists or your professionals. So let's go create. So as you guys all know, I love telling you to focus on your story and not so much on the nitty gritty of how everything was shot. I will break down everything I've done for this photo for you guys here, but I think everyone can really relate to scuffing up a brand new pair of shoes. So I think it's a nice, fun way to just incite a reaction without even considering the photo in the first place. I also knew I wanted to shoot with as much compression as possible, uh, mostly because I knew the second photo is going to be shot so that the pieces of gum look closer together. So for this first one, I just wanted to keep it consistent and I wanted to keep the proportions of the shoe looking similar, uh, knowing that both these photos were gonna be side by side. So the main light is an AD600 and it's shooting through my medium intensity reflector, which is just like a big eight inch throwing uh, type of reflector. It just creates a nice big, strong specular light. I've got it feathered away from the product. It's kind of shooting back towards the camera um, and it's right up against the scrim, which is just a single-sided sheet or a singled up sheet of um, tracing paper. So I've got the X-Pro 3, uh, 50 to 140. I am shooting tethered for this shoot as well. Even though I'm alone and I'm not with a creative director that needs to look at the photos or anything, it just helps my peace of mind knowing that I can uh, be looking back at my photos, zooming in as much as I need to. And honestly, I, I just don't need to worry about transferring files. There's no SD card in my X-Pro 3 right now and it's being powered through that cable as well. So it's, you know, it's using my MacBook's battery, it's using my MacBook's hard drive, and it's also using my MacBook screen. So the cable is a really good middleman between the uh, camera and the computer. There's also a lot of benefits in using a scrim versus just a softbox for this. It's just, you, if you have the tracing paper right up next to your light, you're still gonna create a very hard and directional light, but it's just gonna be a lot more, um, it's gonna remove the specularity essentially. If you have the tracing paper right next to your product and the light a little bit further away, it's gonna create the softest, most perfect light you'd ever seen as if you had a, a 80 foot salt box next to you. So it really is very versatile, even though it does take up a little bit more room because I, I have to set up two different stands. It really does work really well at um, just creating beautiful light that you can control no matter what the subject is. And uh, yeah, and it's great for reflections as well. If you're ever shooting with cutlery, things like that, you wanna create a gradient. Oh, there's Bijou coming in the frame, not realizing that the door was open behind the shades, but it's okay. So for this backlight, I just have an 8200. It's shooting at full power, but I knew I didn't need to uh, break out the bigger light for this. And it's through a gridded strip box from Strobe Pro up from below. I just, I wanted to shoot something with a gradient. A lot of my work seems to be very even lit, uh, evenly lit across the frame. So I've got a scrim of tracing paper that's right up next to the 8600, which is creating a gradient of light as well as a gradient on the background. So I've got two gradients on this shot that are just creating a very nice shapely light for the shoe. And the, the beauty of shooting product really is that I get to kind of add a light a little bit more this way. I can move it 15 degrees this way and see what difference that makes, see if it fits my neuroses a little bit better. I can put it a little bit lower, a little bit higher. In the back, we've got a flag here from that scrim just so that it doesn't affect the background. And I also have a black flag on the right of the shoe, which is just mostly removing the bounce back because I have a pretty small area to shoot in. The, the light the light will hit the wall on the other side and bounce back and add some fill to uh, that side of the shoe, which is not what I wanted. I wanted to create a very intense fall off. So that's why the light is so close. And I also wanted to create as much contrast as possible. So I'm shooting a very left to right. Um, I've got very left to right lighting for this photo. So here's the product in question. We've got the uh, Yuto Horigomi Dunks. If you haven't taken many product shots yet, 
Let's just say that a general rule of thumb is the smaller and shinier an object is, the harder it is to photograph. I know this stuff looks pretty easy and a lot of wildlife or landscape photographers would be like, you don't even have to deal with nature or the unpredictability of animals. And portrait artists are like, hey, have you ever shot a model that was hung over? But the thing with product work is that it's all micro changes. The larger the subject, the more broad you can be with the lighting. But these little things come down to a matter of inches. Shooting in my studio with lower expectations allows me to get used to these nuances like moving the light an inch away or 10 degrees this way or adding a bounce, whatever it is. The more I get to practice like this, the more I can show up on set with the confidence that I need. So here's a little walkthrough for the shot itself just so you get an idea of the proportions. Uh, yeah, exactly. The shoe was just kind of balancing on that little glass rod there, so it would have been nice to uh, kind of stabilize it a little bit more so that the two shots look a little bit more similar, but there we have it. For the most part, that's what it was. The shot is pretty much that straight out of camera, which is pretty nice. There wasn't a whole lot done to it, which uh, I'm pretty proud of. And that's kind of the whole point of these. It's being able to shoot something and now I know I'll be able to recreate similar lighting in a different situation because I'm used to how this functions. I wanted to stretch out the very first piece of gum here. Um, it's funny, I did shoot this in this order. So this is the first piece of gum that I'm chewing, and uh, I was like, ooh, this is pretty good, it's tasty, I haven't had gum in forever. I don't often chew gum, to be honest with you. And uh, funny enough, I, I very quickly got over it. Um, <laughs> there was a lot of pieces of gum for the next shot, uh, but uh, for this first one, essentially, I just wanted to make it look a little stretched out as if we stepped on it and are trying to scrape it off or just create a little bit more of a uh, visually interesting piece of gum. And then here I am with a uh, white reflector. I Honestly, I just wanted to add a little bit of light on um, the other side of the piece of gum. I didn't want it to be too harsh of fall off just on the gum specifically, because I'm not sure, I just didn't think it was as appetizing. Another thing that helps with the shooting tethered is the camera is beamed up the, all the way as high as I could on that C-stand in the back. And if you look here, you can see that uh, I've got my live view just so that I can focus on where I'm pe placing the pieces of gum. There's our little superstar, just totally not interested in the food, which is great. Camera, like I said, was beamed up there, and thanks to the cable, I'm still able to see in live view what it looks like. And since we're shooting in the, you know, digital era of Instagram, um, one of the main things I knew I needed to do was uh, extend the backgrounds for these shots. I knew I wanted to have my retoucher shoot a, to make these a four by five. So instead of a three by two aspect ratio, I did ask my retoucher to bump them up to a four by five. And I'm always open to suggestions. So I let them kind of play with what they like and maybe adjust certain things. And I add my final touches afterwards. And it, there's always a good back and forth between the two. I wanted two shots of, uh, I just kind of preferred the harder light on the shoe of the first photo. And on the second photo, you can see my, uh, my white finger has touched the back of the shoe there, as you can see. So I had her remove that, put the sole of one onto the other. And also she, so she decided to um, change the color of the piece of gum as well, which actually worked out really well. Um, it's something I kind of had overseen, but she just wanted to make it match the bottom of the shoe a little bit better. And I think it turned out really good. And she did also the same thing for the colors on the second shot over here. So as you can see, I obviously had her extend it to four by five and duplicate some of the gum. But uh, she also did a really good job at matching the colors of the gum to the shoe a little bit more so that it would uh, complement the photo a little bit better. It's not perfect. There are still a couple pieces of gum that are a little bit more obviously duplicated in my opinion. So I might do another round of uh, back and forths, but that's the best thing about working with a retoucher, you know, the uh, hours or days that you would have spent editing, you can kind of just off shoot for honestly, probably a lot less than you pay yourself. So some people who do this full time are just better at it and maybe even more motivated at it than you are. So for me specifically, I get to go back to my other clients. I get to shoot with them and not worry so much about having to edit or think about a certain project. I basically just shoot it and then a couple days later or even the next day, I get an email and it's Christmas in September again. So that's great. I, I really do enjoy this process and I think it's something that you guys should all look into getting done, especially if you're shooting on a pretty consistent basis. It's definitely something I think you should consider. You're better off trying something that other people aren't or you'll just end up being another NPC like the rest of them. When you're on set, you're working for someone, they want you to be the NPC. 
They want to tell you what to do and you should just basically be a button pusher and make it look pretty. But you're never gonna get that job if you're not working on creative stuff on your own time in order to wow these people to book you in the first place. Thanks so much for watching guys. I hope you go out and create something new for yourselves this weekend and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.